There we go. Hallelujah. We don't own the rights to this music. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just worship him for a moment? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. This is the day. Oh, glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you glad to be in the presence of the living God on today? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the living God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise welcome. God. Welcome. 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 Welcome, Doretha. Hallelujah. Welcome, Glory. Ashley. Welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome. 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 Welcome, Kimberly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless Hallelujah. the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just so Amen. glad that you're here on today. Hallelujah. Jesus. Welcome to Transformation Life Ministries, where our, our mission, mission is, is to transform, transform the world. world. Multitudes of souls at a time by the renewing of the mind through the preached gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I am your servant, Bishop Gary L. Shearer. And I am the Apostle Sharon Shearer. And we love you and we welcome you to our broadcast today from our home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever your heart is, the Lord is there. There's nowhere that you can go that he's not with you. So we're just glad that you decide to join us on this morning. Amen. 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 Greetings. We also greet our church in the Dominican Republic, Transformation Life Ministries International, where our very own Apostle Gene Robert Tevinen is overseeing the churches. Amen. When we are not there, and I did say churches, amen. Hallelujah. We have a lovely family over there, amen. And we go on missionary trips every year, amen. We do that over there. And here, it's warming up. Yes, it is. So we will be cranking back up our brown bag ministry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, So the brown bag ministry, right? Yes, we just, we put a quick, we put a lunch together. We put a, Apostle puts a sandwich a snack cake, maybe a piece of fruit, a bag of chips, and a drink in there. It costs one dollar to put this meal together to make our brown bag ministry possible. So the link is above uh, this broadcast. If you'd like to donate to our brown bag ministry, or if you'd like to sow into our international ministry, you can become a sponsor and you can sponsor one of the families in our village. So if you go back to our church page, Transformation Life Ministries, you'll see lots of pictures of the different families there in the Dominican. And if you'd like to sponsor one, you can do a, a monthly offering. It'll will go directly into that household. Uh, so we don't take nothing off the top. It goes directly into that household. Matter of fact, we pay, we'll, we'll, we put the fees in, amen, to get it over there to them. Amen. Um, like she was saying, uh, like Apostle was saying, just to reiterate, so the brown bag ministry, she was saying that $1 will make one bag. So let's say like my brother, he, he uh, or some of my brother or my sisters, one of you guys want to donate. So, Twenty dollars. That's twenty lunches, meals for somebody. And what we do with the brown bag is just a tool to let them know that they are not forgotten. That Jesus loves them as well as He loves us. Yes, He does. And you know, um, you may give out. We may give out a hundred bags, but if one person pick up that phone or give their life over to the Lord, it is well worth it. Yes, it is. Just like in our ministry in the Dominican Republic, where the people are at without. Um, electric, and they don't have any running water. Water is pump, pumped in 
once a week and they gather it in buckets and they store it in their house. So uh, the same thing with that. If you want to um, give an uh, offering or you want to support a Pacific family, we connect you up with a family and you can support them monthly like some of us are already currently doing. Amen. You know, you may not be able to change the whole world. Then again, you may be able to, but you can probably make a huge difference in the life of one person. And you don't know what that person is going to go on to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Apostle, we would like to do the uh, memory verses. Now. Okay, yes. Did we miss anything? So we'll get a date for our next brown bag. Amen. And we'll go out and... Uh, the men of God and women of God, amen. We'll be Hallelujah. Wearing, wearing our t-shirts this summer, amen. If you want to be a man of God or a woman of God, M-O-G or W-O-G, meet us up, meet with us, and hand out some lunches. I think I'm having a high flash. That's okay. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little warmer weather. Okay, it warmed up. It Praise warmed God. Up. Praise God. Okay, so Romans 12, 1 and 2. I, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by, by the mercies of God, God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Slow down a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Will you fine. lead? Isaiah 40 and 31. But, but they, they that, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. All right. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Um, Hebrews 11 and 6. But, but without, without faith, faith, it is impossible, impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Amen, amen. Philippians 2, 10 through 12. That at, at the, the name, name of Jesus, Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth, and things... Oh, I messed that up. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Philippians 2, 10 to 12. <laughs> that, that at the, the name of Jesus, Jesus every, every knee, knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in the earth, and things under the earth. earth. That every, every tongue, tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen. That if thou, thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got Glory. through it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank Greetings you. Thank to you. all of y'all. We greet you in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Good Hallelujah. To see Hallelujah. Amen. It's, Glory. I'm Hallelujah. sitting here. Got my pretty little wife sitting beside me. So if y'all see me smiling and cheesing, it's because I got my baby with me. That's my little baby right here. You just finished acting up. I did. Talk to you. Oh, my Play God. the music. You Hallelujah. The, you want to do the prayer? Glory to God. I can't get right. Can Hallelujah. I can't get you're right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. I'm Jesus. sorry, y'all. My sinuses, allergies acting up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name yes, of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we come before your throne this morning with a heart of thanksgiving. Father, we lift up your name and we glorify you, Father.
Father, yes, for Lord. you are the great and mighty God. You are the El Shaddai. Thank you, Lord. You're the Elohim. You are the living water. You're the bright and morning star. Father, we just can't get enough of you, Lord Jesus. You, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. Thank so right you, now, Lord. Father, we just lift up your name. We bless your yes, name. Lord. We give you glory and glory. honor, Father. We praise you for you are good yes, you and are. you are greatly to be praised. Father, we ask right now on today, Father, as we go into this lesson Thank on today, you, Father, that those that have an ear would hear what thus said the Lord. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that someone, Father, would be drawn by your loving kindness, Father, that drawn, they would Lord. hear yes, a word Lord. from heaven today, Father God, and it would change their life. Father, we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you deliver us from the evil and keep all temptation away from us, Father. Lord Jesus, that you will walk with us, yes, Father, Lord. and talk with us on today, Father, that Thank you will send you, your angels out before us, Father, Father, as we venture out into yes, the day, Lord. Father. Lord, that we will stay with our mind Thank stayed you, on you, Jesus. Father, that we would pray without ceasing, Father, that we would know, Father, that you are the Alpha and Omega. Alpha you and are Omega. the author and the author finisher and of our faith. Father, Lord. we believe, oh yes, God, Lord. but help us with our unbelief on help today, Father. We give you praise, we give you the honor, glory, and um, mm -hmm. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would have your way today in this place. Amen. 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 So, here you go, Apostle. Amen. So, let me get the music shut down here. So, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so you. So, we've been, we, last, last week we kind of um, preached a little bit, but we have been teaching on um, the Ten Commandments. And we started off the Ten, Ten Commandments with sin and iniquity. So you would have to kind of be keeping up because it's not just like just saying the Ten command, the, uh, the Commandment and then going forward. So just really quick, amen, because I don't want to get caught up because this Fourth Commandment is rather long. And all of them have been really extensive. So the first thing we begin to talk about that we decided to talk about before we went over the Ten Commandments was sin and iniquity. Because sin is directly related to the commandments, amen. It was a way for God to uh, let us know that we needed a Savior. So one of the things, if you got your pen and pencil, you can write some scriptures down. And the first one I want to give you, you already had this from the other lesson. When we talked about sin and iniquity, we talked about Romans 7 and 9. And, uh, Romans um, 7 and 9 and Amplified, and it was, I was once alive without the knowledge of the law. When we talk about the law, we're talking about the commandments. But when the commandment came, and I understood its meaning, sin began became alive and I died since the law sentenced me to death. In other words, when I saw the commandments, I realized that I was a sinner mm. and I needed a savior. I My realized God. that the wages of, and then we, uh, Romans 6 and 23, I realized that the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Thank God Amen. for that. And then um, and, um, Psalms 119, 10 to 11 is a good scripture for you for sin and iniquity. And there were several more, but I'm just kind of hitting them real quick, Apostle. Okay. With my whole heart have I sought thee, oh, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Let me not stray from them. Thy word have I hid. You hear that a lot. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Amen. That I might not sin against thee. And when you hear that scripture, really that came from the commandments. That word is the one that the people hid in their heart. So they would not sin against thee. And then we went to the commandments. One thing to note about the commandments, and I know I'm talking really fast. I just want to keep it moving. One thing that was really important about the Ten Commandments is the first four commandments are dealing with our relationship between us and God. Amen. And that's why it took us a little while to get through these, because it's a lot. It's not just a one-word sentence, like the first one is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's just not a quick sentence. You have to, if you go through your Bible, it's all about not having any gods before God. It's, it's extensive, so it took us a while to get through that. So the first commandment, we're dealing with... Um, our relationship with God was that thou shalt have no other God for me. And that that commandment required us to have undivided allegiance to God. 
God should have that supreme place in our life. That's what we talked about in that first commandment. The most important thing about that commandment it is it was supposed to inspire us to obey all the other commandments because God wrote them. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is what God said. So we should be inspired to obey all those commandments. That's what was important about that. The second one was, and people overlooked this one with a minimum concern, but we went a long way into this one. The second commandment is, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. Nothing. And this commandment required us to worship God, our creator, rather than anything else that has ever been created. God wanted us to worship him. And, um, and, and, and basically, God alone should be our source of happiness. Mm -hmm. God alone should be the one we look to when we want to learn things or we want to know something. It should be God we go to first. Amen. Amen. When we got a need of something, it should be God. Because when you put something, think that you got more power in going here or more power in your bank account, more power in your job, more faith in your wife, more faith in your husband than you got in God, then you're actually... And it's called idolatry. You're actually putting things before God. God didn't want us to do that. God wants us to come to him first, right? Amen. Amen. And the and the third one was, uh, blah, 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 blah. What was the third one? And the third one was, thou shalt have no other God. Oh, the third one was, thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord, thy God, in vain. Now, this one was huge because people just think that just means, oh, we shouldn't use the Lord's name. We shouldn't swear. We shouldn't say when you get mad, you didn't say the GD word or whatever. No, nah, it's a lot more. It went a lot more deeper than that. Basically, God wanted us to honor his name to the point to where when you even say the name of God, when you even say Jehovah, when you even say Jesus, that you have reverence in his name, that you don't just loosely throw his name out in a conversation Amen. while you speaking to somebody, you know, like you could just say, God, this, nah, uh, uh, uh. If you're going to bring God into it, you need to become correct. Amen. We also talked about Apostle bringing God's name up even when you're in places of worship and stuff like that. And what you say in church, you're going to do and then you don't do. That's a lot. We went into a lot of that. And we talked about our speech and our conversation should reflect that we serve God. Amen. Should reflect that we have a God. So, and, 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 and one big thing about that was the fear. In Psalms 119, 9 and 10, Psalms 111, 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of uh, wisdom. <coughs> Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. So that was the first three. What's the fourth, fourth commandment, Apostle? Look, I gave, I let her jump in there. <laughs> okay. Um, the fourth apostle, what is the, I mean, the, the fourth <laughs> commandment, uh, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Exodus 20 and eight. Uh, very simple. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Let's see if I can find that. Hallelujah. The Sabbath. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Uh, so let's turn to that. Exodus. So we're in Exodus and that's the scripture you put up, right? Apostle. Yes, sir. Exodus, Exodus 20, 20 and, eight. and 8. All right. So, let's, so in order to understand this one, God had a few verses after that one. And it says here, you can hold that if you want to. Okay. In 28. And then, so 8 says, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Verse 9 said, now he's going, now, now God is explaining it to us. Verse 9 says, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. And then verse 10 says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, manservant, or the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. Nobody should do any work. And then 11, he says, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So he gave reverence to the seventh day, the day when he completed everything. And it says that God rested. So we want to talk about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. So that's from sundown on Friday 
to sundown on Saturday. That's when the Sabbath would have been. So one thing before we continue to go forward with this, because there's a lot of mis it's a lot of different things going back and forth on this um uh uh thou shall um keep the Sabbath day, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. One thing I do want to point out as we go forward in this, and there's nowhere in the New Testament where Christians are told to keep the Sabbath day. Um so because our rest Technically, our rest, when we go through these scriptures, you're going to find out that our Sabbath day of rest, our rest, apostle, is in Jesus. So, and I want to break some of that down so that I'm not just saying it, but the word is what we find in the word. So, what's the next one? So, what is the Sabbath? The Sabbath day is the seventh day, Saturday. The Hebrew word for Sabbath means rest. In the beginning, at the time of creation, God rested on the seventh day and hallowed it. He set an example for his creation by demonstrating the necessity for physical rest. We all need to rest. That's like Bishop and I are leaving for our rest. On Monday, and we're going to rest. Hallelujah. Uh, according to the law given in Mount Sinai, the seventh day was the day of rest in which no uh, secular work was to be done. It was to be kept holy by God. Okay, so, so one thing that's very important. When we talk about Sabbath, we're talking about rest. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Does God need to rest? No, God does not need to rest. And we're going to get into that why... Uh, it was called rest. Um, so let's talk about Jesus. Did Jesus observe the Sabbath, Apostle? Uh, it said, yes, Jesus observed the Sabbath until his death and resurrection. At the time. At that time. At that time, he became our Sabbath. He became our rest. Now that's good. Jesus let me give him the scripture. Matthew 12 and 8 mm -hmm. says, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Now that's pretty plain. Jesus is the Lord even of the Sabbath day. Now to fully understand that statement right there, Apostle, we need to go and turn your Bible to uh, Matthew 12. And we start from verse 1 to 8 and see what Jesus was talking about. Amen. And I got it right here too. So, so to fully understand that statement, what we're talking about now is Jesus being a Sabbath. In Matthew 12 and 8 said, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. I like that. Even of the Sabbath day. So if you think this is something separate and ain't got nothing to do with Jesus, you're wrong. He says he's Lord over that too. Amen. So the first thing we want to look at is this. Let's look at... Um, uh, at the time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. Let's look at verse 1. 12, we let, we're at Matthew 12 and 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath. It was the Sabbath day through the corn. And his disciples were and hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat them. Right? Then verse 2 says, but when the Pharisees, the Pharisees are always out there. We got people like Pharisees right now. But when the... <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, you, we always got that Pharisaic, um, you know, attitude. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. We talking about these people who are uh, legalists. You know, legalism has ran a lot of people out of the house and the church and the body of Christ because um, of their, you know, uh, legalistic and dogmatic perspective about, um, you know, the law. Now listen what Jesus said, verse three. He said, but he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he was in hunger and they, were, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only for the priests. This is Jesus telling the Pharisees about uh, giving them an example where David did something that was not, you wasn't supposed to do. See, Jesus answered the Pharisees' complaint by reminding them about David when he was on the run in the wilderness and how 
he and his men ate the showbread. It was like 12 loaves of forbidden, only forbidden to be eaten by the priest. So neither David or his men were priests. But check this out. God never punished them for eating the bread. Why not? Why didn't God punish them for eating the bread? See, because when God created the law, when I talk about the law, remember, we're talking about the Ten Commandments. It was never intended to put hardship on the people of God. Mm, mm, that's God good, never Bishop. intended it, the Ten Commandments, to, to inflict pain on you to make your life harder. The purpose of it was to let us uh, come to realization that we're sinners in need of a Savior. That's why Jesus is our Savior. Come on. He's our Sabbath. Amen. We take rest in him. Amen. If and Jesus worked on the Sabbath and Jesus didn't keep the Sabbath mm -hmm. by doing the things that they said were unlawful, what make you think that you can really keep the Sabbath in the way of the old law? See, the law is now written on our heart. Hallelujah. Somebody need to come to an understanding that the law is written on your heart. Be, and, and the only way that you can live... Uh, and keep the law that's written on your heart is to be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will keep you from falling. That's good. Because imagine this. Imagine you you right now keeping the Sabbath and you don't know Jesus. That's what we're talking about right here. you trying to keep some ritual. You're trying to keep the Sabbath, but you really don't even know Jesus. Because if you did, you would know that Jesus is the Sabbath. Amen. And I ain't trying to step on nobody's toes. Because verse, this is what, let me go back to the scripture. In verse 5, because we're reading... Matthew 12, 1 through 8, right? So verse 5 says, Or, this is Jesus talking, Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? See, Jesus was reminding the Pharisees mm -hmm. of the priests doing the work of the Lord. Therefore, they were blameless when they was doing the work of the Lord. And then in 6, he says, I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Jesus. Just one, oh, Jesus just one greater. is greater than the devil. That's something greater is King Jesus, baby. And then in seven, he said, now let's check this out. You got to catch this. Sometimes you got to go back and look at the content when you get a scripture. In seven, he said, but if you had known what this meant, this Jesus talking to the Pharisees, I will ha have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have commanded the guiltless. You wouldn't have said we was wrong if you knew that what not this com meant. Condemned. You would not have condemned. Right. See, the condemnation come from man and 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 from the enemy. See, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And what he's telling them, if you had to recognize who I am. You see what I'm saying? That he is the son of the living God, that he is the Sabbath, then you wouldn't have came to him crazy saying you weren't keeping the Sabbath. So, you know, he checked them in. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so this word is for those of you who been trying to understand how we can be uh, Christians and not keep the Sabbath because we're followers of Christ. Christ didn't keep the Sabbath in the in the legal way that the Pharisees thought that they should because he is the Sabbath. You can't keep the Sabbath if you wanted to. So you need to just take rest in Christ Jesus. That's very good, Apostle. So in seven, he said, if you will not, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. In other words, I'd rather, I'm, 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 I'd rather have mercy on you than to have you sacrifice something. See, God is a compassionate God. He'd rather have mercy on us for finding something to eat when we hungry, because you hungry and you suffering, he have he rather have mercy on you that you had to find something to eat than than being so hard on you to where and sacrifice. So God would rather have more faith, would rather have us to have more faith in Him than in performing rituals. Amen. And then in eight, the one we had. For the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus, like Apostle said, Jesus is the Sabbath. Jesus is God. How they going to tell him about the Sabbath? Then he is the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Right? Let's move on. 
That's good, Bishop. I I, I mean, right there, Nineteen. that's the lesson right there. Mm -hmm. That Jesus is the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. That, like did anybody get free from that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because whom the Son set free is free indeed. He came that we would have life and that more abundantly. He came to break off the chains, to set the captives free. See, somebody been caught up and in legalism. They've been bound by mm -hmm. the things of the law and the word of God is coming right now, the word from Jesus to set you free from trying to keep the law. And then I like his mercy because later on in the lesson, we might not even get to it today. We're going to talk about it's okay if you keep the Sabbath. God says it's okay for them to keep the Sabbath because they're doing it unto the Lord. He said for those that ain't keeping the Sabbath and doing it in Jesus, it's okay for them because they're doing it unto the Lord. It's okay that you decide to eat certain stuff that you like to eat, as long as you give thanks to it to, unto the Lord. My and it's God. okay for those that don't want to eat that, as long as they're not eating it because they don't want to eat it because they don't want to offend the Lord. So, God, that's what I mean by his mercy. It worked both Ooh. ways. So, we ain't mad at we We just don't celebrate the Sabbath in that way. We celebrate it in God every day. Every day. Some people celebrate it on that day. But guess what? We're not saying it's nothing wrong with it because the word said ain't nothing wrong with it. But it, the word wants you to know that the Sabbath is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, that's good right there, Bishop. Speaking of which. It says, are Christians required to observe the Sabbath and old covenant holy days? No. Mm. Sabbath days and many of the Jewish holidays were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Mm. I, I'm going I'm to read that again. Ooh. The Sabbath day and many of the Jewish holy days were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So let's stop right there for a second. And I'm going to repeat what Bishop said. It's okay if you keep the Sabbath and the holy days. It's okay. But we're not required as Christians to keep the Sabbath in the sense uh, of the way that they did in the Old Testament because we living under the dispensation of grace and Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. So we take rest in him. Hallelujah. Let's, let's put some scripture on that to back up what Apostle just said. Let if me finish. Turn, let me finish it, and then you can go to it. The Sabbath oh, okay. is no longer a day, but the spiritual experience oh. of entering into the rest of Jesus mm. Christ. He has made it possible for us to rest from the labor of striving to earn salvation. Can you read that uh, last sentence again? He has made it possible for us to rest. A what? Rest. Rest. Sabbath is rest. Sabbath is rest. And he made it possible for us to rest from the labor of striving to earn salvation. Because you can't earn salvation. It's a free gift. Now, we need to put some scripture on that. Ooh, so, Jesus. let's put some scripture on that. Matthew 11, verses 28. Now, watch this. Jesus is still talking. But Jesus is getting ready to tell us how. Now, we said Sabbath is rest. Now, Jesus is getting ready to tell us how he is the Sabbath. This is a good one. You hear this one all the time, Apostle. So, it's 28 to 30. Can you read verses 28 to 30? Yes, Matthew what? 28 to 30. 11? No, yeah, 11. Okay, 11. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. What? I will give you what? Rest. Come to me, all who are labor, that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find what? Rest. Unto your soul. Do 30. For my yoke is what? Easy. And my burden is what? Light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, this is big. Now, this is big. Uh, Ooh, that's uh, good right there. That's good. That's good. We just read Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Now, let's take a look at these, because we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Sabbath. Sabbath is rest. Mm -hmm. And, and we're Jesus about, is the Sabbath. And, so look what Jesus said. First he said in 28, he said, come on to me. Come on. Come on to me. That first part right there in verse 28. Come on to me. Jesus is the object of our faith. Well. Not the church. Not the preacher. Not come to the church. Not come to the preacher. 
Not come to your holy sacraments. Uh, come to me. Hallelujah. He's telling you to come to him. Yes, Lord. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Jesus is our salvation. Yes, he and is. And if you remember what Apostle read, she said, he has made it possible for us to rest from the labor of striving to earn our salvation. Your rest is in your salvation. My God, my God. Rest is knowing, is in knowing that you say. Jesus. Rest is knowing that you don't have to worry about it no yes. more. You can turn, you can turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. Well. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Salvation. So he said, come unto me. Yes. So, Because the wages of your sin is death. Mm. But I got a gift for you. You just need to come to me. Yeah. And then in 28 it says, come unto me. But then it says, all ye apostles that labor and are heavy laden. My God. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Oh, what are we work, talking trying about? Trying to work for your salvation. Woo. In, or, <laughs> in order to come to Jesus, a person <laughs> must come to You must admit that you burned down with sin. My God. You must admit that you a sinner. That's what it means when it says all oh, you that labor the heavy laden. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's Carrying around word. sin ain't easy. No when well, you don't know Jesus, I don't know about you, but I come, I'm going to walk that road right now. I come from that white line on the New Jersey Turnpike and the trucks was going by blowing their horn. I'm talking about being heavy laden and the trucks was blowing their horn at me, right? Because I was getting ready to step out in front of one and kill myself. My God. I can almost feel the truck touch me. He was thinking like, what are you doing? We're talking about, come unto me. That's before. That's before. I, I don't want to get too excited. That's before I got saved. My God. Amen. That's before I got saved. Heavy laden. All you the labor heavy laden. That's talking about the heavy, the weight of sin. And it got so bad on me, I wanted to kill myself. Burned down. Burned down with the weight of sin. Amen. Mm. Talk about that. Burn down. Burn down. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, hallelujah. if you learn about Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So you can trade in that weight that you've been carrying. You can let go mm -hmm. of that load you've mm -hmm. been carrying and you can just come into Christ and begin to take rest because he's the Sabbath. And you're going to like this, Apostle. Check this out. Only people who are lost can be saved. Well. If you're not lost, you can't be found. Well. You got to be lost. You had to be lost. I told you I was walking the highway. I don't know what Apostle's walk was. It was many things. Right? Mm -hmm. You first have to believe you are lost to be saved. I'm talking to the person that may not be saved today. Apostle going to love this one. Faith in Jesus Christ is preceded by repentance. Yes. Before you can come to Jesus, tell them you got to be willing to repent Woo! of your sins. Lord we Jesus. talking about the Sabbath. We mm. talking about your rest. Is in Jesus. That's what we break it down right yeah, there. Right? Huh? We breaking that down yeah, right now. Your rest is in Jesus. In order to come to Jesus, it's preceded. It's preceded by your repentance. You got to be willing to turn away from your sins. You got to be willing. And, and, and not just turn away from your sins. You got to be willing to ask God knowing that you can. There's the penalty of sin is death. So you asking Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I messed up. My God. But I want to be saved. Amen. And then in verse 20, and then the last part of that, it says, so we talked about come unto me. All you that labor and all you that are heavy laden. And guess what it said at the end of that apostle in 28? And I will give you rest. Yes. We're talking about the Sabbath. Somebody running around trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody, hallelujah, don't know which way mm -hmm. to go. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Somebody don't know. Preach. Hallelujah. How to Preach. fix it. Ha hallelujah. Preach. Running around. Ha you done ran out of bright ideas. Mm -hmm. ha hallelujah. The Lord just yes. told me to tell you ha your Preach. degree Preach. can't fix Preach. it. Ha hallelujah. Because you Preach. got degrees. Ha but that 
that won't fix your problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. You running around, as they say, like a chicken with your head cut off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trying to do this uh, and trying to do that. Uh, but the Lord told me to tell you on today uh, to take rest in Jesus. Uh, he mm -hmm. is your salvation. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he is your Sabbath mm -hmm. day. Glory to God. Jesus says that I will come unto me now all you that have been I will give you rest. Jesus is your rest. Yes, he Jesus, is. And guess what? It don't cost you nothing. You can't earn it. Mm. You can't buy it. You can't work your way to it. You can't take enough showers to clean yourself off to go to Jesus. You can't say enough nice things out your mouth. Mm. You can't do enough, enough nice gestures. You can't do enough front flips. You can't do enough back flips. There's nothing you can do to get this free gift but... Except Jesus is your Lord and Savior, huh? Well, it's a free grip. The only way to receive that gift is to accept that the penalties of your sins have been brought and paid for by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Christ. That's why you can't work for it. That's why you can't buy it. Because Jesus had already paid for it. Jesus paid for it. That's why you can rest. You don't got to listen. Is this making sense? You don't have to do the work. Amen. You can rest in the sack, and the reason you don't have to do the work, because Jesus already did the work. Yes. That's what he means by rest in me. I will give you rest. Hallelujah. You, you can't, you can't, you know how you be trying to get right, get right, get right, get right, and it seemed like you could never get right. Mm. It don't never work out. Mm. Something always go wrong. My God. Or you say, I don't ever want to do this again, and you find yourself doing it. I remember when I Vicious was out cycle. there. cycle. I remember when I was out there, I'm, I used to say, I ain't going to never do this again. It'd be so ugly and so terrible out there. I would say, I ain't going to never do this one again. And guess what? Wake up the next day doing the same thing. Matter of fact, might be doing the same thing two hours later. Mm. You can't rest from that. The only way you can rest. So Jesus went and purchased. <laughs> purchased. Yes, he did. Your salvation yes, with his did. life. Yes, he, he did. He purchased your salvation. The perpetuation. With those, with, those beatings, with those beatings that he took. Yeah, the they, with, head with, the head. with the stripes on his back. Yes, Lord He Jesus. took it to the cross. Yes, he did. He not only just purchased it, but he took your sins and he took them to the grave. He died with them. Yes, he did. And don't forget, he ain't never sinned. He Hallelujah. just took our sins so that you could stand before him. Mm. So that you could stand before God. Covered in the blood of Christ. My God. So that you can make it in. That's your rest right there. You don't mm. have to work for it no more. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. And 29, it said, what 29 say, Apostle? 29, what verse 29 says, says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find what? Rest. Unto your soul. Rest. Now check this out. Take my yoke upon you. So this means, this is huge. This means to submit to the will of Jesus and to turn the control of your life over to him, right? Give it to Jesus. Take my yoke upon you. Brings us to one of our memory verses. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brother. Come on, apostle. By the mercies, mercies of God, God that, that you, you present, present your bodies a living sacrifice. sacrifice. Holy and acceptable, acceptable unto God, God which, which is, is your, your reasonable, reasonable service. service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, it says, and learn of me. What what God mean, what Jesus mean when he say, and learn of me? See, as we acknowledge Jesus as our Lord over our life, he trains, teaches us, and shows us how to live. Yes, he That's does. That's what Jesus mean and learn of me. In other words, I've led the example. I pay for you. Your rest is in me. All you got to do is learn of me. I'm going to show you how to live. And the Holy Spirit is your teacher. And when you accept Jesus Christ, you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which teaches you of Jesus. And then in the last part of 29, it says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. This is Jesus talking. Jesus said, I am meek and lowly in heart. And you should find what? Rest. You should find what? Rest. Unto your soul. My We're God. talking about the Sabbath. We're talking about the rest being Ooh, in Jesus. Rest unto your soul. See, the Pharisees, the Pharisees was really harsh. 
They always thought they was better than. They was always judging people. Somebody know some church folk just like that right now. Talking about some, what you, you supposed to be resting on Saturday. You supposed to be doing this. Oh, you ain't supposed to be eating that pork. You ain't supposed to be doing this, this, and Some people judging right now. Yes, they are. There's some people judging that might not even know Jesus. Well. Imagine that. Well. You think you making it in because you're doing all the right things. <laughs> You can't work your way to that. Just working, 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 See, and ain't getting nowhere like a rat on a little uh, wheel. Jesus said, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your soul. See, Jesus is the exact opposite of what the Pharisees was. Mm. He's gentle, and he's meek. In other words, it's going to be painless. It's going to be easy. See, when you accept Jesus Christ, those negative things that's going on in your life will slowly begin to go away. What's 30 say, Apostle? For my yoke is easy my and what? My, my yoke... There's that word yoke again. We're going to talk about my yoke is what? Easy. And my burden is light. Woo! Imagine that. My yoke is... See, Jesus was speaking. He yeah, was, glory. He was talking to the Pharisees. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he was telling the Pharisees, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Because see, the Pharisees was putting heavy loads on people. Mm -hmm. They was putting a lot of pressure on people. You ever ran into somebody that put too much pressure on you? My God. You just can't take it no more? Woo! You ain't doing this right. You ain't doing that right. You messed up this and that. That's so, that legalism that run people out of the church. Sometimes us Christians are too hard on those that are lost. My God. Jesus is meek and lowly in heart. My God. So why are we not that way? But no, we too busy judging. Oh, he messed up. Some of us only want to minister to those that is easy to minister to. Some of us don't want to minister to that cousin, to that brother, to that nephew. That one is crazy in the head. That one is out there on drugs. That one is out there stinking. We don't want to bother them. We want to go to where it's easy at. We want to sit in the church every Sunday on Sunday and think I done did my do. Mm. And, for, and, and walking past people, and driving past people, and walking past people that need your help. My God. Jesus said he meek and lowly. We do a lot of judging. We all guilty of it. Yes. I do it, apostle do it. We judge people. We judge people. But Jesus don't do that. He says his yoke. Jesus, what did he say in 30, apostle? My yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Does this mean that there are no more problems in a Christian's life? No. Does this mean that there's no more tribulation and trials, apostle? No, you're going to go through the baptism of the fire. Does this mean you ain't going to have no troubles, <laughs> apostle? No, but it what it does mean is that when when you go when you going through something, you can call Ooh, on the name call of on Jesus, his name. and you can See? take rest in Ooh. Him at any moment. You can turn it over at any moment. You can go give it right back to God at any moment. You can start your day over and just give it to Jesus. Jesus said, "My yoke is easy." Woo. Check this out. In other words, it's easy to connect up with me. Mm -hmm. It's easy to connect up with me. And the reason I get so excited, I'm sorry, I got to get excited. If you knew anything about me, if you knew where I came from and what God delivered me from, you would know why I get so excited. So let's talk about this. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. What yoke? What's a yoke? A yoke is a piece of wood that apostle that they would take and if... I can't, you too pretty to be called an ox. But if I was an ox, right, and we had a she-ox sitting right here, right, they would take the the yoke and put it on both of us, right, so that we both could share the load when we out there in the field working, mm. right? Mm. That's so we could share the burden. Jesus says his yoke is easy. In other words, it's easy to connect with him. Jesus is saying, I'm going to share yo, I'm going to share the load with you. Yeah, you're going to go do some things like Apostle said. You're going to go through some fire. You gonna, But I'm yoked with you. Yes. I'm going to go right there with you. And the reason you know I'm going to go there with you, because I done already been through all of that. I went to the cross. I paid the penalty for sin. Mm. I took the beatings. I suffered all for you. I, so now I'm going to yoke with you and go through with you. Mm -hmm. And you can vice versa that. I'm going to go through with you, Jesus. See? Now, 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 check this out. If you yoke together... With somebody that's weaker than you, that's where you hear the phrase unequally yoked. Mm. Maybe one person is stronger than the other, and then the load ain't going to go right. Maybe one person is shorter, one pe person is taller. Then you unequally yoked. But let me tell you something, baby. When you yoke to Jesus Christ, <laughs> when you yoke to Jesus Christ, 
It's going to be an easy yoke. You ain't got to worry about being unequally yoked because you yoked to Jesus Christ. He says his yoke is easy. He says his burden is light. So, See, mm -hmm, go, woo, Jesus is an easy fit. He is. That's an easy fit. Come and since, on. since you spoke on unevenly yoke, what we're referring to here is I believe in Jesus. I'm a Christian and I'm going to hook up with a Muslim or I'm going to hook up with a Jehovah Witness or I'm going to hook up with a, a Mormon or I'm going to hook up with a, a Seven Day Adventist and y'all don't share the same belief system in Jesus Christ. That's unequally That's yoked. That's unequally yoked. It and, ain't going to work. And you breaking one of those commandments we just talked about. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yeah, but it ain't gonna work. It ain't so gonna work. That's that's what he's saying when he said oh, sorry, we gotta be yet. we gotta be evenly Equally yoked yoke. in order to for the weight to work, right? So when you try to come into relationship and you gonna come into matrimony, y'all need to be yoked up equally in Christ Jesus, or it ain't gonna work. Ain't that's gonna that's work. that unequally yoke. So mm -hmm. when people hear that, oh, they said we wasn't equally we was unequally yoked. See, I I I, I was foolish. Uh, once in my life and I married someone that I was unequally yoked to. Hallelujah. They didn't have no faith. Uh, but what you but see we got but what you do is when you yoke when me and my wife yoke together, guess what? Jesus is yoked in between us. Yes he see, is. Jesus is yoked in between us. Because guess what? He's the threefold cord that's not easily broken. And the reason we Hallelujah. Say, the reason we got Jesus between us Amen? Because he can carry the load. See, he got grace. His grace, his mercy is sufficient to carry your load. Yes, it is. Jesus will carry your load. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. We, and we gonna, if and we you want to lighten your if you want to lighten your load, hallelujah, glory to God, you want to lighten your load, I, I recommend that you come to Jesus. Hallelujah. I recommend. Woo. I recommend Jesus. If what you've been going through is just too hard, Woo! if you just can't find no heavy? way out, if it's just weighing you and, down. And no life is weighing you down. The things that I'm telling you, I walk, Woo! I walk that white line, Apostle. That Hallelujah. was just one time. Yes, I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to live no more. That's how heavy my load had got. Mm. And I think we all reach that place in our life. But if that place is on you right now where you don't know which way to go, which Ooh. way to turn and you listening to this broadcast it's because the Lord is drawing you with his loving kindness because he's lowly and meek, he is a gentleman he won't force himself on you but he's He's inviting you into his heart, Into he's inviting you into his kingdom right now won't you invite him into your heart don't you know that there is joy in heaven over one sinner, over one person that has a burden one person has a load and says, you know what? I'm tired of carrying this load. I'm going to turn it over to Jesus. How do I do that? First, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, one of our members verses is that if thou confess the Lord Jesus with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Really? The Bible says, because confession is made with the mouth through salvation and and. Uh, belief is through the heart mm. unto righteousness. Yes. So you can b confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. You can believe that Jesus took all your burdens, all your sin, all that stuff that you had and took it to the cross. And not just that, he took it and he died with it. He mm. took your, he, he, he substituted himself for the death we were supposed to have. But he rose! The death you were supposed to have, he substituted. He, he filled the gap for you. He rose. He took the though. punishment that should have been ours. He rose. He paid he the bled. price. He bled. That's why you see here the blood, the blood, the blood. We covered in the blood. Now when we stand before God, if you say, you covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. God don't see your wrongs. God don't see your sin. Mm. God see Jesus Christ. And Jesus sitting there saying, let him come. That's one of mine. Because no forgiveness Woo. of sin took place without the shedding of blood. So he has shed his blood for you. And now if you want to come into Christ and be covered by the blood of Jesus, that's what it means to be covered by the blood. Because all throughout the Bible, whenever there was forgiveness of sin, there had to be shedding of the blood. So Jesus is the, the, the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice. He is the perpetuation. He has brought us back into right standing with God. And now we can 
enter back into the kingdom. We can come into Eden. We can live on top of the world. But you got to come to Jesus. You got to believe. If you just say this simple prayer with me, hallelujah, you can be saved. Amen. You want to be saved? Just repeat this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I realize. I realize. Because of the commandments. Because of the commandments. That I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner. I believe. I believe. That you are the son of the living God. That you are the son of the living God. I accept you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Feel me. Fill me. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. And show me how to live. And show me how to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that simple prayer, you're saved. Hallelujah. You are saved. The angels in heaven are rejoicing and we're rejoicing. Please reach out to us and let us know that you have come into relationship with the Lord. We'd be more than happy to disciple you. You can go to, uh, M- you can send me an email at info at SharonShearer.com. You can go to our website, TransformationLifeMinistries.com or the shortcut is SharonShearer.com. Hallelujah. Go to our inbox. Um, Like us on our Facebook ministry page, Transformation Life Ministries. We love you with the agape love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, click on the uh, link above for Tithely. You can tithe into this ministry. It's good ground. All of our tithes go to our church in the Dominican Republic. And we just want to tell you on today, we love you with the agape love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You've been tuned in to Transformation Life Ministries. Ministries, where I am the Apostle Sharon Shearer. And I'm your servant, Bishop Shearer. God bless you. And until we meet again, may the Lord keep you in perfect peace.